Hi everybody, thanks for joining us today for this webinar. Um, my name is Dan Aston and I'm the Marketing Manager here at Crowd Control HQ. And I'm really pleased to say that I'm joined today by um, fellow social media pro Rich Evans from Blue Frog Media. Um, Rich, do you want to Yeah, hi, that? it's good to be here. Um, looking forward to talking to you about all things social media. Awesome, thanks Rich. <laughs> so we're going to spend the next 30 minutes or so um, talking about a really interesting and very timely topic as, uh, as uh, where we are in December now. We're going to be talking about how to get more results from uh, your social media Christmas campaigns. So Rich, obviously with your, your work and, and uh, at Blue Frog Media, um, you've worked with many sort of well-known UK-based organisations on their social media, including uh, Christmas campaigns. Um, so to get us started, you know, when do organisations typically start to you know, get started on their Christmas campaigns and planning and, and those kind of things? Well, d depending on the business, um, Christmas never really stops. Um, we've got businesses that literally Christmas is their business. Yeah. Uh, they decorate people for Christmas. Um, and so that that is all they do. So yeah. all year round, they have different sales cycles. Um, other businesses just kind of have to acknowledge Christmas. So it really depends on on the business. If you're a if you're in offices or sort of lawyers or, or, or tutors or things like that, um, then you just really have to acknowledge Christmas and it's a case of letting people know what your plans and opening hours are. Yeah. Where you sell Christmas, so that is either Christmas is your product or you are in the hospitality industry where we do a lot of work yeah. and so you are open at Christmas, then, then it's different. So really, when I say it doesn't stop, that is genuine. So January, you would really start with reviewing what's happened last Christmas. Right. Um, I think often as well, you want to put yourself in the position of your, your customers and when they start thinking about Christmas. You know, personally, I already know what we're doing for Christmas next year and where in the country we're going to be yeah. because we have Christmas planned out that way. So tapping into when your, your clientele are talking about it, it is probably best. Yeah, makes sense. Um, so yeah, January, February, we'd be reviewing the recent Christmas campaigns. What went well? Um, what didn't go well? So you mean in terms of uh, content and offers? Or yeah. So looking at sort of booking trends. So if we take an example, as say the hospitality. So we work with yeah. the sort of biggest UK hotel, pub, restaurant chain. Um, they will want to look at where they filled their bookings, where they were year on year, when those bookings happened, and then start planning out what they're going to repeat because it worked really well and yeah. what they maybe need to do a little bit differently, which will sort of take us into March and April when it will be sort of planning and then building the campaign. Okay. So they'll be signing off assets for Christmas whilst sort of Mother's Day and Easter are live. Yeah. Then into May, June, you would start dripping that out. Now, obviously, the thing with Christmas is you can get mixed reactions when you start talking publicly about Christmas, especially on social media, um, in the summer, because there are people out there that don't want to hear about it. Yeah. But at the same time, as we discussed before, there are people that plan things far more in advance. Mm -hmm. But needless to say, it's going to be drip fed. It's not going to be the sort of the main topic of conversation. Um, and then really launches, they tend to happen earlier every year. Um, people want to get the head start and get the first sort of mention in there. Yeah. But I'd say certainly by August, September, Christmas campaigns are normally in full flow. Okay, yeah. So really getting started, it, yeah, like you said, January, February, reviewing. Yeah. And then another couple of months later, you're starting to plan out the broader level yeah uh sort of themes and uh yeah content and whatnot and again, again if, if you sell christmas so if you're in the gifting market and things yeah, yeah you know people aren't going to be buying their presents um in january february yeah. so you would just be analyzing planning but certainly when you know there are people that will sort of plan for saving for christmas all year round and you do start to sort of think well i'll put that off till christmas or that's maybe something i could get for christmas so so really yeah almost by black friday it's all done and dusted almost. Black Friday is almost nowadays where people will do their last bits of, of shopping or sort of finish off the plan for what they're going to do. Yeah. Where you're booking restaurants and, and tables or hotels or even holidays and things, really people start planning that Christmas night, you know, Boxing Day. 
if you think about your customer behavior, if you've sort of had guests come to you for the first time this year, if they've had a bad experience or it's not been perfect, then they'll be thinking, where should we go different next year? Or what should yeah. we do different? So they're looking so you, out, thinking about that. Already. Exactly. So if they're your competitors, you can capitalize on that. If they're thinking that was great, you know, best Christmas ever, then they'll be starting to think about doing the same again next year and yeah. maybe bringing more people to it. Okay. So, you know, I, I would argue that a message out or some sort of contact with everyone that has been with you for this Christmas as early as the day after Boxing Day is probably right because they're in that buying mode, they're in that decision making mode, capitalize on it. So that's interesting. So you mentioned actually, you know, is is Christmas on, on social media, is it actually getting earlier every year? You know, when when do Christmas campaigns go live? I guess a, a little bit it depends on yeah, who your customer it's, is it's again, kind of, in your industry. Or... It's kind of almost taboo. It's like the first uh, the first Christmas song on the radio. Yeah. You know, there are radio stations that see it as a trophy. Um, there are others that will want to sort of, you know, snigger at the competitors that have started, bolted too early. You know, everyone has a different idea of when Christmas starts. Um, Personally, my birthday is the 6th of November, so for me, cannot absolutely not start until the 7th. <laughs> Other people, 1st of December. Other people, you know, Christmas is a big deal, and, and for some people, it's what they look forward to all year round. Yeah. You know, yeah. people work away, they don't spend as much time with family. So people are quite happy to be told midway through the year that you're now closer to next Christmas than you are to the previous one. Mm -hmm. And actually, that's maybe a general rule. Um, as long as you're closer to this Christmas, I say it's fair game to start looking okay. to talk about it. So is there a risk of launching too early if you start talking about Christmas too early? You know? um, there is a risk of, of low level reputational damage, but I work in social media. And so there, there is that old saying, there's no such thing as bad publicity. For me, there's there's no such thing as bad reach. Now, of course, there are instances in the world that could test that theory. But I have seen, particularly with, with clients, where it is more difficult because all they do is Christmas. Yeah. You know, their whole business model is based around Christmas, right. um, where we will launch something in the middle of the summer. And there will be lots and lots of people that will jump onto that post saying, I can't believe you're talking about Christmas. It's terrible. It was still in the summer. That though is just increasing the reach of that post, yeah, you know, especially yeah. Facebook's algorithms. Every time someone wants to comment or react to it, it's going to show it to more people. And for every one, two, four, five people that are angry that you're talking about Christmas in summer, I can guarantee you there'll be one that might not publicly vote that opinion, but will see the post because of the people saying how negative it is and be really positive and want to start thinking about Christmas. Okay. And we've seen that on their posts, you know, we'll post something and it will go viral for 50 percent the wrong reasons people saying it's terrible to talk about christmas right but then the private messages will start coming in where people have seen the post because of that so they're deep, of sending nature. dms saying, asking for I, I inquiring and, okay. yeah what can you do for me this christmas yeah so true. so I, I would say there is a risk but i don't think it's a risk that's big enough for anyone to sort of say right i'm going to boycott your restaurant because you spoke about christmas too early where there could be other negativity around, you know, poor menu or poor standards with taxes, people may choose to boycott you. But I think at the very worst, someone is going to see your post about Christmas and just decide they don't want to book for Christmas at that point. Yeah. They're not going to feel strongly enough to boycott you. So yeah, I would sense. say, no, go for it. <laughs> Suck sense. it up and take the heat and, <laughs> and take the reach that will come off the back of it. And then I suppose, obviously, the nature of social media is when you do start to introduce your Christmas messaging, Christmas campaigns and content, it's not all about Christmas, right? You sort of drip feed it a little bit uh, yeah. alongside other content. And it, other... Exactly, I mean, especially in that hospitality world again, you know, we've got the World Cup this year, which is gonna be a big sort of deal for everybody and that's gonna suck up the summer. So you certainly yeah. wouldn't be talking about nothing but Christmas um, in the first instance, sort of into August, September. I, again, I sort of draw back to the the Christmas songs on the radio. You yeah. know, you'll probably hear the first one, maybe, you know, with those ones that want to be the first one might go as early as October, but into November you'll start hearing them maybe one every show, every three hours. Right. Then you start to hit the first week of December and it's maybe bumped up to one an hour. Then you might hit two an hour. And certainly this week we'll probably be hearing a fifty fifty split between <laughs> Christmas music and and, and, and their normal. Yeah. Follow. Yeah, and that totally makes sense. You can see how that would be reflected. The same methodology drip and gradually increasing as yeah. you get into December as people are more willing and accepting of Christmas, yeah. you know, if, if for your for your sector and getting involved. Yeah. 
Yeah, absolutely. I think you know Black Friday is a sort of is an interesting standpoint for well for mainly retail, but nowadays pretty much everyone finds a way to get involved with it. Whereby you know that is the point where it sort of switches over for me. So Black Friday is sort of half get something for yourself, half get your Christmas shopping sorted. Yeah, and then yeah. from there on in, people are generally thinking about others rather than themselves with their with their spends. Um, up until that point, it, it's probably it's probably an even a split. Yeah, interesting. Um, so in terms of um, organizations, obviously we know social increasingly being used for uh, complaints and uh, support inquiries and, and questions and things like that. So super important over over the, especially the Christmas holidays period, I guess. Yeah. Um, you're able to deliver, you know, really outstanding social customer service um so what's what's your thoughts around that like dealing with that being prepared for that and, yeah uh, i mean and that that is something we we feel really strongly about and we probably that, that's our what we do our usp so we we look after a lot of our clients um community engagement nine till nine seven days a week 365 days a year so that includes christmas day yeah um for me the bare minimum is to be open on a social media customer service platform in the same hours as your operating hours are. So if you're in retail and you're open on a Sunday, really your customer service channels need to be as well. Um, I think I, I saw a study not long ago where four or five years ago, 60, 61% of people expected a response on social media within a day. I saw that question asked again this year and similar amounts wanted a response within an hour. Yeah, yeah. People's expectations of customer service and social media and responsive nature has, has, has gone up dramatically. And really for businesses, I think a lot see it as a headache. Like, right, we've not only got a man on our phones and, and things, we've now got social media, but social media for me, I mean, if, if someone's ringing, they're not gonna ring for an hour before they get a response. Actually, you're getting a much easier ride on social media and you, you can be, it's far less pressured. If someone is asking you there on the phone in a live one-to-one -one conversation, you've got to have your answers ready to go because people don't like the input on hold either. And yeah. that's not generally a good customer service experience. Whereas on social media, because the nature is someone can send you a message and then go off and do something else, wrap presents, um, go back to work, whatever it might be. As long as you've got back to them by the time they need to check their phone again, which is gonna be in 30, 45 minutes, yeah. then they're happy. They're happy. And so for me, it's a much better place to deal with customer service. Um, the other thing is it's all noted there. So you've not got to take heavy CRM notes. You've got the history of the conversation. It's all there, there to see. Exactly. Yeah, you the you can it. move it in. Um, so, yeah, I, I think as a bare minimum, be open on customer service when you're open for business. Now, if you're in e-commerce, that's difficult because you're essentially always open for business. Um, we've we've for some time now offered nine to nine seven days a week and have, have rarely found a business where that is not going to be acceptable for their customer base. Yeah. Um, people people understand that there is a limit to it, but I think the the main thing is acknowledging. So it might be that you're running a skeleton operation um, during out of hours, yeah. uh, as you would see them from an office point of view, because that's the problem. It's offices that tend to deal with the social media rather than the feet on the ground in the restaurants and in the in the retail sector. Yeah. Um, if you can acknowledge someone and say, "Look, hi, we're getting back to you. This is just a social media team. Your question needs a needs input from another team that unfortunately aren't in the office." Then, then that person generally, 80% of the time, will be happy. Yeah, yeah. There will be others that that want an answer more immediately, um, but you just you're just gonna have to do the customer service thing, and it's a it's a step better to be talking to them. Where we see the proliferation of issues on social media, it's generally because someone has got in touch with the business, and there hasn't been a, a prompt response. So what that then does is that that takes that person. They may have only resorted to social media because they've not been able to get the response they wanted elsewhere. And customers nowadays know that social media is going to invoke a response because mm. it's so public. Yeah, the public nature, visible. If they really, really want to the response, they're going to be sharing it into interest groups. They're going to be tagging their friends and family in, telling them to share it. You remove the license to do all of that as soon as you just acknowledge them. So my answer would be acknowledge and isolate as soon as physically possible. Yeah. 
The other thing is the other side of customer service. The customer service also often references a negative sort of thing. And of course, that is a, a thing on social media. People use their negative views on social media to get a response. But also, it's, it's an impulsive time of year. So if someone is in that sort of buying mode of an evening and they are browsing on your website and they want to buy or book something, but they just need to qualify it before they do so, you want to catch them in that moment and convert them. If you don't get back to them the next morning when they've gone to bed, they've woken up, they may have some sort of buyer's remorse, they've gone to work, mm. maybe they found out that something's not going to go to plan, then you may have missed the moment. Yeah. Even worse, if they've sent that message to more than one business and your competitor has got it quicker, you may have lost the sale altogether. Yeah. It's a very in the moment live thing, social media. And so I, I would get back to people promptly and dependent on your resource, of course, but across as many hours as you can do. Yeah. So the timeliness, super important. Yeah. Just acknowledging, if you can't give a full response on social, just acknowledge that you've seen, Absolutely. seen the complaint or the question or the inquiry. Absolutely. And that goes all year round. Christmas, of course, the importance of things at Christmas gets amplified. So if um, if we you were to go for a car on any given Sunday in the winter period and the sprouts were just a little bit undercooked, um, that that would be a minor low level issue that you would probably leave your sprouts, mention it to the staff, that wasn't great. If you're having your Christmas dinner and you've organized it and you've got 12 of the family there and everyone is saying how awful the sprouts are and yeah. they're not as good as Aunt Josie's, which is where you would normally be for Christmas, that has the potential to ruin that Christmas meal experience. So. The, the importance of things goes up with special events. We see it on Mother's Day, Father's Day, um, you know, low level customer service issues that would cause minor negativity throughout the rest of the year have the potential to cause a big issue because it's that one day of the year that, yeah. that nobody wants it. And people so, jump straight on Facebook, face on uh, straight onto Twitter. Absolutely. Yeah. And and I suppose if you if you've opened that gift of that morning and it's, you know, my son wants Playmobil, um, he's asked Santa for. So We've bought that for him. That's been in the cupboard for months and months and months. We haven't opened it to check it, and that's going to open on Christmas morning. If something's not right, we are going to be, that is it, everything ruins. That's the one <laughs> gift he's looking forward to. We've planned out playing with it. So the proliferation of things at, at Christmas and the, the amplitude of what people consider to be a big issue goes through the roof. So although there will be less issues because there are less people active on social media on Christmas Day than there would be on any other day, those that are and will want answers and yeah. will want. So I think to have some sort of cover if your business is not necessarily open on Christmas Day, but certainly relevant to Christmas Day, you, your product could have been gifted or your areas of your business are open for, for services. Um, again, social media is something to, at the very least, be monitored yeah. for if something does start. So you need to be prepared, I guess, is the, is the key message. Make sure you know yeah. who in the team is going to be acknowledging the messages and responding if required. A absolutely, because the longer it goes on yeah. unanswered, the more reach and the more momentum it's likely to gain. Yeah, but I suppose the flip side is, like you, you pointed out, the importance of... Um, you know, the Christmas period to people. So if you can actually give a, a really good uh, experience on social to people, then they're willing to share that as well, aren't they? They're willing to talk about it. And yeah, I think so. I mean, you know, people, there is still a novelty when a business talks back to you on social media. Hmm. So there will be lots of businesses that will be in tagged in what will hopefully be very positive posts. Yeah. So, you know, we're all meeting at the, the, the dog and doublet for dinner. Great to have all the family together. A quick acknowledgement from that business to say, it's been wonderful to see you. Hope Christmas was great. We'll, 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 we'll go a long way in that sort of, um, you know, to, to grow that brand loyalty. The same with the gifts, you know, what I'll hopefully be tweeting about is how happy my son is with his, with his Playmobil. Yeah. So that would be a positive and it would be great to be able to then acknowledge that on social media. Um, people's expectations are reasonable, um, especially when they haven't got an issue. Yeah. So you don't have to be the same as you would be in any given day. But I would certainly have monitoring there as a as a minimum. Okay. Um, so I guess what leads me nicely into my next question a little bit is um, 
the worst case scenario is to leave some complaints or messages unchecked actually over the period yeah over the holiday period and it's there's a risk there for reputational damage isn't there if it's if it's left unchecked and then things can not yeah. necessarily go viral but they spread amongst friends and communities as you alluded to a little bit a absolutely uh, i mean the thing with social media is it things can get very big very quickly um there's a wonderful example if if, if anyone um, wants to check it out of, of how quickly things can get big yeah. uh, there's a woman called justine sacco uh, it's s-a-double-c-o and it was some years ago now but she sent uh, just from a private Twitter account, you know, personal Twitter account, 180 followers. She was a PR exec for some American firm, but no one of note. Um, but she sent a very ill-conceived tweet just before boarding a plane from a plane from London to South Africa. Mm -hmm. That was just—I think she must have thought it was a joke, but was pretty in poor taste and had some borderline racism as a part of it. Right. I won't <laughs> talk about it live here, but certainly look it up if you want to. Um, she then boarded a flight before the days of Wi-Fi on flight, so 10, 11 hours later. During that time, um, there's a big, great story, so if anyone is interested, please, you know, jump jump on and have a look at it if you've got a few minutes to spare. But the, the thing that sort of shows how big it got, because she didn't put anything out there, people sort of saw it and thought, is this a joke? Is this a problem? And then, like, she didn't respond, so people were like, this must have been serious, you know, is this woman for real? Wow. Um, by the time her plane landed, she'd lost her job. The, the company wow. had actually suggested, tell them that, you know, they, they terminate their employment. Yeah. Um, the biggest thing for me is though, for, for 24 hours after, if you typed in Justin on Twitter, the most popular search changed from being Justin Bieber to Justin Sacco. Right. She had more heat than impact. Justin Bieber. Yeah. yeah. Um, it does show you how quickly things can get big if unacknowledged. When something can be removed or it can be answered or acknowledged, suddenly then you remove that license for people to have as part of the issue and they haven't even got back to me. Yeah. So so yeah, just, just something quick, prompt, um, on the day will, will help a long way. Yeah. Um, and then if you can keep them placated, give them reasonable expectations, that's generally what people want is an expectation of when it will be sorted. Yeah. If if my son's Playmobil isn't all in the right place on Christmas morning, I know it's not going to be sorted then and there. But if someone can assure me that as soon as they're back to the offices, or they're on Boxing Day or the day after Boxing Day, um, this will not only be put right, but someone will get in touch with me and you know there's an apology for my son and just things that I can talk about to take the heat off me because obviously in that heat at the moment it's going to be my problem. Yeah. yeah. That is generally going to be enough for people. Yeah, makes sense. The, the other thing with hospitality is the wonder of live customer service. So increasingly now what we see is people in restaurants tweeting or putting on Facebook issues that they're having with the restaurant instead of speaking in to the staff. In that moment, yeah. Yeah, it yeah. used to be that people would take to social media as a last resort because they couldn't get the answer they wanted from humans. Now they will just go straight to it's social media. It's the first media. resort, isn't it? It's the first channel that they yeah. can to. So, so by us being there monitoring quickly, we can take um, Sharon, who's got her issue with her undercooked sprouts at the Dog and Doublet. We can take that um, issue, call through to the house, get in touch with the person that's responsible for that shift. They will tell us that Sharon said nothing to them at all. In fact, they've been a check back and been told that everything was fine. But we can get them to be over with either more sprouts, better, yeah. you know, cooked more to their liking, <laughs> or an offer of an apology if they finish their main meal and, you know, a bottle of Prosecco with dessert or something like that. And actually what that then does is it turns around what was the potential for rumbling on to more of a negative, you know, as they got home and they complained about the sprouts again, yeah. and, you know, actually it turns it into a real positive because Sharon will be blown away by the fact that someone was not only monitoring the Facebook page, but live and then getting to them to so, sort it. So how do you actually actually go about sort of implementing that and doing that? I suppose you need uh, you need someone in each of the, the venues or centers with access to their to their Facebook account so, and Twitter account so that they can monitor and then respond. Yeah, there's, there's numbers of different ways. So, uh, you know, at, at a very low base level, then, yeah, you can have your pub your Facebook notifications on your phone or on a central iPad and just be checking them as and when you can. Um, and you really, that's a low level monitoring service that you can start up yourself, which will be telling you, you know, you want to look through the noise and you're just looking for keywords, which will pop up to say either a one star review or someone that said, this is not acceptable. 
Then what we do on a larger scale is we use software like like yourself yep. with, with crowd control um, to monitor mass pages yep. and, and monitor for keywords. So we offer a sort of fairly full level service where we've actually got human interactors there doing it around the clock. Um, but what you can do is set it up in an almost automated fashion where you can be listening out for mentions of certain keywords, either with your brand tagged or non-tagged, mm -hmm. which will then alert you if something is going wrong. Um, as opposed to looking at absolutely everything. Yeah, trying because, to manually do it. Which... Yeah, it's all very well me saying this, but not every business, certainly on today, will be in a position where they've got a resource or they're able to constantly watch their feeds. Exactly. Yeah. So you want to set it up so that you're going to hear about the, the, bit, the bad issues. Yeah. Like you would as a manager in a business, you know, you've got a staff and a team out there that you generally will keep everyone happy. As soon as something trigger, triggers it, you know, and there's an issue, then you're called through to come and deal with it. Makes so sense. it's much the same. But yeah, I think the turnaround of a negative, you know, we touched on that point then, but actually it's a really big one. For lots of businesses on social media, the best virality that they will get and the best reach is where they deal with something really, really well. Yeah. Um, Tesco are a fantastic example. They must get hundreds a day of very low level customer service issues. And every now and then one of them they will take on and they will almost put a tongue in cheek sort of nature to it. Um, and people see that and really appreciate it. And they um, engage with that. And at, at their heart, they've dealt with the issue. You know, the guy with five rashes of bacon instead of six has, has, has been right. You know, it's been put right. He's yeah. had vouchers and things. But then they get but the, the exchange as well. and the public way it happened yeah. is is fantastic. It mm -hmm. makes people, you know, that brand reputation yeah. really goes up a notch. So uh, we've got an interesting question here, which is um, around, it's a, it's a question for if you're working as a part of a, as a social media team, yeah. um, it's around, you know, how much content should uh, organizations be posting actually um, over the holidays period? Some suggest that you get more engagement when people are off work, but, yeah. you know, they're still checking in on Twitter and Facebook or LinkedIn and things. Um, but is there a risk that you're invading their space by, as a as a business or as an organisation, you're still tweeting yeah. over the holidays? I think I think the person the person asking that the key thing is is they are asking it from a re they're obviously wanting engagement because they're looking for some suggest there's more engagement with people, which is great. That's the start. Yeah. Um, if you're looking for engagement, you need to post at the times that you're most likely to get it. Now we use sort of software and, and reports with yourselves that can tell us when our when our audience are most likely to be responding. Yeah. Facebook itself has wonderful insights as well as Twitter and things that will help you with the best times. Mm -hmm. What I'd say though, if you're looking for engagement, um, posting at the best times is the best way to do it, but not if you're not going to be there to respond to any of the engagement. Yes, I, I don't think there's any issue at all with the business invading my downtime or or my out of office hours. If they're then going to be there to respond to me, if I'm if 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 I've said something to them, yeah. I think generally you know post something that doesn't ask for engagement if you're not going to be there to respond to it. Yeah, so it's Christmas sense. Day, for example, not everyone is going to be there, but a little message that says you know Happy Christmas from everyone at at, at Crowd Control HQ yeah. is is fine. Yeah. It, it's it's kind of it's not expected. It's not going to cause any issue. And generally, that's what most people take to social media for on Christmas Day, unless they want to complain about something, <laughs> is to wish their friends and family, their customers, anyone a Merry Christmas. Yeah, Others sense. will choose to do that on the day that you finish up. And it could be that you're partnering that up with, you know, for reference, we'll be here on such and such a day or, or our opening hours. Sharing your out of We'll be here on the social media team to talk to you if you need us. If yeah. not, have a great Christmas. Again, setting people's expectations. Of yeah. What they, what can... But the posting for engagement is a big thing. So many brands that we go and talk to, there is a subconscious. Um, and it happens where the person responsible for posting the content is also the person responsible for picking up the interactions. Mm -hmm. But they're only contracted to do that during office hours. So on a Friday afternoon when you should be posting to get the most engagement during Friday and, and the rest of the weekend, you're posting and you're subconsciously asking closed questions or even worse, no questions at all mm -hmm. to not get engagement. Yes. You need to skip that and you need <laughs> to either put a resource in place to be able to answer them yeah. or find another way because social media is all about engagement. Yeah. Yeah. Interesting answer. Good answer. I know we're almost out of time, so I think... One last question to squeeze in, which is around um, how do you prepare uh, to handle a crisis or some kind of news event that 
yeah happens you know over the holiday period um, and might affect the sort of messages that you were planning to to post over the yeah over the period you know and um, being able to stop those messages so what what can organizations do and to, to prepare and plan yeah. to be able to do that I mean crisis issue management and all these things should absolutely be there should be a function in place before it's needed yeah. and hopefully it will never be needed but we we're quite quick to set that up with anyone so in some instances it's a whatsapp group you know is a is a fairly modern way of for doing the, it for the internal teams just so. for the people that would be the, the stakeholders in any issue so yeah. pr teams marketing teams high level directors and things yeah. just so that if something's happening they know that it's going to hit there and you've already got everyone in the right place you're not going to set up conference calls or email threads or anything like that yeah. um nowadays more than ever we work in a world where lots of awful things happen you know daily it feels like there is something awful happening in the world um that that could have an impact on your content even in the last 48 hours it's a terrible accident in birmingham um with with multiple um deaths uh something in america with a train yeah. um, and then yesterday potential what seemed like it could have been with a with a car at an army base so we we will generally have in place um we, the nature of us being around the clock, whoever is responsible for the shift or the content, as soon as we see news breaking of something on social media that has the potential um, to, to be big, yeah. um, we will look at all of the scheduled content that we have going out for all clients, uh, pause it, and then just go through and check that nothing else is going to hold any sort of different meaning. Yeah. Um, unfortunately, you know, you can. we live in a world where we have to schedule things in advance. We can't always be there to, to schedule content or to post content. So things can happen in the world that can completely change the meaning of something. Um, we did some work with um, with, a, with a restaurant chain, sort of American themed, and they had signed off a huge competition to give away a family holiday um, in the summer to um, Tennessee and okay. some of the other areas in America. But then between that content being signed off and published, the storms hit big and caused a lot of damage yeah. and, and deaths in, in that area. But the content still went out even worse they would chosen emojis using the alert sort of emoji to, to post it so needless to say that got some really bad rep yeah. um and then so now they are sort of putting donations to the to the cleanup fund as part of their menu on certain dishes the competition was pulled and and it's taken some getting back from that okay. so yeah just always bear in mind you, you are gonna have to schedule content try and not schedule it any more than a week in advance um and then also look at look at the meanings that world events could change the meaning of it you know th there was one of the um vehicles involved the other night it was a taxi mm -hmm. and lots of people will be referencing taxis home or getting taxi this and there's just anything that someone could think well that's in poor taste yeah um it's, it's not worth posting at all and just pause it yeah because the risk is that people yeah. see it and they are offended by it or like you said in simple yeah. taste and then it's your yeah. reputation again is and i mean that, at risk so that that's the things that are out of your control the yeah. stuff that's in your control is just just think about it yeah. there's a good one that i use i think it was walls um the, the the brand the food brand they make cornettos and things yeah but they'd obviously been scheduling content quite far in advance and had posted who's got that friday feeling on a friday morning at three minutes to 11 um just as a general throwaway tweet Unfortunately, it was on um, Armistice Day, Remembrance, and so it was on the 11th of November, uh -huh. three minutes before we all stopped for a two-minute silence to remember. Yeah. So again, that got some really bad rep, um, and it's a very simple mistake and very easily avoided to, to cause what can potentially be quite a lot of bad negativity and things. Absolutely. Well um i think we're a little bit over time sorry about that. Uh, it's all right like i think there's a lot of good discussions and points there so um i'd like to thank everyone for joining rich been an absolute pleasure talking to you thanks some Dan. really good insights and uh for everyone um the recession has uh, the session has been called uh, recorded and will be available afterwards if you want to share it or, or listen listen again and uh we hope to see you on another crowd control hq webinar sometime very soon thanks again and bye for now